I've got the recipe for you. This dip is just amazing. It just melts in the mouth. Bon Appetit! Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to the Very Vera Show. I'm so excited to have back for the second time Brian Hart Hoffman. Many of you may remember, but for those of you that are new to our market areas, you're in for a treat today. So he has a brand new cookbook, The Cookie Collection, and we he allowed us to decide which three cookies we wanted to make. So tell us what we're going to be making today. Alright, so your team chose our pan banging molasses and espresso chocolate chunk cookies. These are big and delicious and they will be a household favorite. Then we're making peanut butter and jelly sandwich cookies. I love that flavor combo. It's like a sandwich as a child That's and this awesome. is even better in cookie form. And then bourbon pecan thumbprint cookies. Think about pecan pie, think about cookies, add a little bourbon, it's perfection. And there you go. Yeah. And you know what? We're going to have a fantastic giveaway today too. But let's quit talking and get started on this first I know, recipe. we've got a lot to do. So I started by creating the butter and sugar in the mixing bowl and to that I'm gonna add an egg vanilla extract and the molasses and Vera I'm gonna let you whisk the espresso powder salt and baking soda into the all-purse flour okay oh we there use our fingers is. to That's get it right. in the bowl and then I'm gonna get this in here and then we're gonna get this together in no time. This is one of the things I love about this recipe is once you've got everything in the mixing bowl, it comes together so quickly and then it's time to bake the cookies. Well, let me tell you something. If you stay around him very long, you know that everything happens quickly. I know, right? I talk fast, I, like I bake fast, I bring everything I mean, it's together. It saves time in the kitchen too. God, so, that's such a pretty color. And it smells so mm. good. And this is another one of those easy recipes that once these ingredients are mixed together, you're gonna keep the mixer running on low and we're gonna slowly add the flour to the butter and molasses mixture uh. until it comes together. And then one of the key things that you'll see me do in just a second is I need to make sure that the molasses did fully incorporate into the cookie Gosh, dough. I'm getting, that, I'm getting that smell now, it's just wonderful. Right, and I love the and... fact that this is pan banging. Oh, it is such a fun baking activity. Everybody's going to love the pan banging. It, I love it. So this recipe was created by Sarah Kiefer, and she got national attention when the New York Times published her pan banging recipe. And it was just for a chocolate chip cookie. So imagine how excited and surprised I was when she created a custom version of the pan banging cookie for us at Bake From Scratch. So I get to brag about that. Oh, we have our own sure. version. So I'm just going to make sure that the molasses and ingredients are fully incorporated. And then I'm going to fold in the best part, oh, chopped chocolate. chocolate. And the espresso powder is actually going to enhance the flavor of the chocolate. You're not going to taste it very much in the cookie. So, Gosh, that smell. I know. And you know, for those of you that follow Brian on social media, you know that the the whole boomerang thing. So we had so <laughs> much fun with the pan banging part of we, that. You've got to do boomerangs. It is a requirement. All right, so because these cookies are so big, the thing that I recommend is to scoop your cookie dough onto a kitchen scale. Okay. Because here we're going to look for about three ounces per cookie. Okay. Because they're huge and I want them to all be about the same size. So I need to add just a little bit more. And you need a little bit of flour too. Oh. Why you go well, ahead? actually I'm going to use my hands okay. just to roughly Great. shape this together. And then I'm going to put it on a baking tray. Okay. These are going to go in the freezer for 15 minutes because we want the cookie dough to set up. We don't want it to melt as soon as it goes in the and oven. And that's so important to the whole chemistry of baking. Absolutely. So here's a cool trick too. If your freezer at home is not wide enough to put this entire right. baking pan in, you can scoop and freeze the cookie dough and then take it to the baking tray that we're going to use to bake the cookies. Now, I am placing these very far apart because they are going to spread a lot during the yeah, baking process. Yeah, I mean, it's process. like that big, right? Oh, these cookies are huge. Ooh. And when we get the crisp outer edge and the soft center, you will see why this is such an addicting cookie to bake. Well, so, these are going to go to the oven and then we're going to bang the pan. All right, well, let's do it. So, when we come back from the break, we'll get started on the peanut butter and jelly sandwich cookie. So, let's keep going. All with right, these yeah, cookies. we'll scoop and get these on the way to the freezer, too.
Welcome back, everybody. And if you're just joining me, I'm with Brian Hart Hoffman, and we are busy, busy, busy with baking out of his brand new cookie collection cookbook. It's all about cookies today. That's right. So you were busy during the break. Yeah, so during the break, I took our pan banging cookies, and it was time to bang the pan. So you put the cookies in the oven, and they bake for about seven minutes without any interruption. And then the fun starts. That's right. For the last seven minutes, every one to two minutes, you lift the baking pan four inches from the oven rack and drop it down. Super therapeutic too, by the way. Makes a lot of noise, but that's what sets those beautiful ridges and gives the cookie that amazing, iconic texture and well, shape. Well, and this whole process is so new to us, and when we were testing and Corey was in the kitchen doing this, I thought, what is that racket? <laughs> But honestly, it is so worth it in the end. It is. It gives you such a unique cookie with crunchy outer edges Perfect. and a soft center. And when you take a bite, you'll see what uh, I'm talking uh, well, about. I already have. All right, so we got <laughs> some things that we've done ahead. All again. right, so now we're going to make our peanut butter and jelly sandwich cookies. And like I was telling you earlier, peanut butter and jelly is such a comfort food for me. It's not uncommon for me to order a peanut butter and jelly sandwich from room service when I'm traveling. I love them too. Sometimes you just need it. Well, this cookie takes that to a whole new level. So. Before we got started, well, before we came back, I started with the creamed butter, right. brown sugar, granulated sugar, and an egg and egg yolk. So that's already done in the mixing bowl. And now I'm going to add peanut butter, here's the flavor, okay. and some vanilla bean paste. While I do this, you can add baking powder, baking soda, and salt to the all purpose flour and just whisk it together. It's super easy and I'm comes getting together really quickly. Good at this part. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I'm creaming butter like it's a, like, like an art form, I'm you know? Yeah, well, it is. Well, you know, there's so much chemistry involved in all of this from, you know, like you said, the banging of that pan. Um, Brian actually said during the break that he would he would like to make that recipe and not do it and compare the two. It's Just, what I love about baking. It's like, okay, the recipe's amazing. Let's make it sometime without banging the pan. You're right. still going to have a delicious cookie, but the texture is going to be different. So, just like in the earlier cookie we made, I've got this ready to go, and with the mixer on low, we're just gonna add the flour right. to the peanut butter and butter mixture. And this is super easy when you're baking cookies in the kitchen without having to start and stop the mixer. Just keep it running. And the other thing I like to remind everyone as well is when you're making cookies or cakes and we say to mix it until it's just combined, we really want you to stop the mixer right. as soon as the flour disappears. Because once that happens, we don't want to overwork the cookie dough. That will affect the final texture of the cookies. Well, and the thing I've found, Brian, and we as a team have found, you are so descriptive in exactly what to do, um, which is one of the reasons why you do weights. I it, love to weigh the ingredients right. because that is going to ensure that you get an even, like, perfect outcome with your right. cookie texture and your flavor. And if you struggle with baking and so often people say, I can cook, I just can't bake. I always say, yes, you can bake. You just need to start with a kitchen scale, weigh your ingredients, and I promise that outcome is going to be so much better. Well, we were kind of arguing about it before we started today because, <laughs> you know, I'm the, I'm the home ec teacher, and so I learned how to, you know, to measure properly. But you're right. People don't measure properly, and then they call you up and tell you recipe's not right. Right. So the scale takes that whole fear away. That's exactly All right, and your other friend when baking, cookies as a scoop. So now you're going to take the peanut butter cookie dough and we're just going to scoop it onto a parchment lined sheet tray. And then these are going to go in the refrigerator for 30 you minutes. To, you want me to grab what we Yeah, if you'll grab here. the ones okay. we did earlier. This is where that refrigeration time is actually so important because it allows the flour to absorb some of the moisture from the recipe and it helps us work with the dough a little bit better as well so it's not so sticky. Once you have these refrigerated, we're going to take the scoops and toss them in some granulated sugar. Who doesn't love that extra crunch that you're going to get from the sugar on the outside and of these And then that cookies. looks so pretty after they've baked as well. Yeah, because you get this little, like, crunchy outer layer on the cookie, mm -hmm. and it really is such a nice added step here. And then... A peanut butter cookie would not be a peanut butter cookie unless... You put a fork on it. <laughs> I 
I don't know what it is about a peanut butter cookie. It's the lunch but room. It has it's the have... lunch room when we were little. You just so you know it just you can look at a bakery case and go, oh, that's a peanut butter cookie. It's got the tine fork topping on it. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> well, we've got we're going to finish this during the break. And in Vera's corner today, I'm going to show you a unique idea with the charger plate and chalkboard paint. That's kind of fun. But then after that, we're going to get started on a boozy cookie. It's time for yes. booze. All right. So let's keep working. All right. Give me that fork. I'll start putting the tines on. To see what's cooking with the Very Vera Show, follow us on Facebook and Instagram and on Cottage Ketchup. Vera's Corner is sponsored by Tax Slayer. It's your refund. Go get it. No matter the time of year, I love to come up with creative ways to entertain. Today I'm going to share a chalkboard charger that can be perfect for your table. To start, find some inexpensive plastic chargers from the thrift or dollar store. You also need 220 sandpaper, some primer, and chalkboard paint. Give the charges a light sanding with the 2020 sandpaper. Wipe away any residue, then apply a coat of paint to glosser or primer. This will give the paint a solid base to hold on to. Let this dry completely. Next, apply two coats of chalkboard paint. Allow to dry completely between coats. Allow to dry for 24 hours, then you're ready to decorate. Write your guest names on the rim for a creative alternative to place cards. If you're having a holiday buffet, write a message on the inside section of the charger with the plate on the top, and your guests will get a surprise when they head to the buffet. Make your own set of chalkboard chargers and use them for all occasions and take it as a chance to get your young person involved. Time to get crafting! Welcome back, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed that little tip today about doing that to a charger flight. Awesome. You've been doing it for years. You know, I, know I have. <laughs> <laughs> we were on the cutting edge of a chalkboard charger plate. Um, but anyway, this chapter, Boozy Cookies. These are boozy. You know, honestly, we could have made them all out of that chapter, but we tried to mix it up. But this is so fun. It's like the happy it. hour of baking. I know. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. So we are making our bourbon pecan thumbprint cookies. And I did a few things again just to make sure we're ready to roll. Right. And I'll start with the dry ingredients. We put pecans in a food processor and ground them so mm -hmm. that we have them finely ground. Okay. And surprise, surprise, Vera is going to whisk together our dry ingredients. I have definitely learned how to whisk dry ingredients today. <laughs> So to the pecans, you're adding all-purpose flour, okay. cornstarch, baking soda, and salt. And oh, that's baking powder. But it, you know what? We're going to go with it, that's right? right that's baking right. powder and salt. You're going to whisk those together, and then I'm going to again shock her. I'm going to perfect the creamed butter over here. I have my butter and sugar already creamed in the stand mixer, and to that I'm adding canola oil. I'm adding an egg. And it wouldn't be a boozy cookie without the bourbon. So here we go into the bowl of the stand mixer. I'm going to bring these together with the butter and sugar. While well, you look at that skill, I, mean, I am honestly, so proud of you. <laughs> That's why I love to have Brian on the show. I get the day off. <laughs> The art of whisking dry ingredients, I'm telling you. Oh, Nowhere man. can you do it but on the Very Vera Show. That's right. Where your baking skills meet whisking in a bowl. Well, and then we're so busy during the break, too, but it's to be able to give you that many more recipes every time we do a show. And when I'm at home, I truly do measure everything like we've done okay. here on the show. How so, many times have I told y'all that it makes you enjoy it more? It if does. You measure everything out. I'm so glad you said Friends that. Friends of mine say, it's like you've set up for a TV show. I said, it is like I've set up for a TV show. This is what I do. Alright, so now that I have that combined in the stand mixer with the mixer on low, yes. you've seen this before. I'm going to add the flour mixture into the oil and butter mixture. And the oil in this recipe is going to really complement the oil from the pecans, mm. and it's going to make the texture of these cookies so so unique. They're not going to be brittle and crisp like a pecan sandy. Pecan or pecan, Vera? I Talk say to pecan. Me. I say pecan. We couldn't be in Georgia without baking with pecan, pecan. 
So however you say it, grab them and use them. That's in the exactly kitchen. right. All right. So after this just comes together. Oh, I need that oh, spatula need that one spatula more time. Back. Sorry, Absolutely. I don't want to leave any of the cookie dough behind. None. And I'm that's where I those. actually get my fingers involved. I know. I, I got to leave of... some because I got to. I got to enjoy it too. Well, you know? and you know, you were talking about that all this cookie memory for you and why you chose that picture for the cookbook. Yeah. Was all the time that you spent with your grandmother doing this, and you know that's kind of the way it is well, that, for, for me, me as baking well. Baking is like memories and flavors. Yes. So I'm going to take the scoop of cookie dough. And I'm actually going to get a little bit of flour on my hands. Watch okay. out. Okay. Yes. Because <laughs> <up on bread. laughs> I'm going to put the flour on my hands to keep the dough from sticking. Okay. And I'm going to shape them into balls. And then we can talk about what makes a cookie a thumbprint cookie. Yes. Let's and this talk is about the that. argument or the discussion <laughs> of the day, right? Yes. So, Vera, how do you make a thumbprint? Well, I like to use my thumb. Well, they, it wouldn't be a thumbprint cookie without it, right? Oh, you want me but, to try it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Perfect. See, if this is, is it stuck? See, you yeah. could have put some flour on your hand, too. And one thing I do is I take the back of a measuring spoon, and then I use it to get that perfect shape. Because I'm a little OCD in the kitchen. I like oh, I for it to be say, perfect. This is perfect. And then you could also use the end of a wooden spoon. Right, well, let me do that. So then off to the oven these go. They're going to bake for 10 to 12 minutes. And while they're baking, I've made the bourbon pecan filling for some cookies that we already made. But this is a combination of pecans, light brown sugar, dark corn syrup, butter, eggs, salt, and bourbon. And the smell is unbelievable. Look at that. Vera, put them in these cookies because this is when they get really, really beautiful. You take a spoon of the filling into the thumbprint portion of the cookie. <laughs> And then we top it with a pecan half so that you are identifying those as pecan thumbprint cookies. I love it. See, they look great. These are great to take as gifts too because the filling, the flavor, the presentation is show-stopping. These are some of my favorites. All right, well, we're gonna get all this presented so you can see how everything turned out. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Time to eat. I might just eat this whole thing. <laughs> I do that too. It smells so good. I mean, I have had so much fun today, and you know, everybody says, Vera is so energetic. Well, I am nothing. <laughs> I mean, I have like low energy next to this guy. It has been so much fun. I know, and you I'm, are holding. I'm hanging out, adoring this perfect superstar of the pan banging I mean, tray. It's crazy. The ridges, the soft center. It is so good. Are you crunchy or soft? I'm, cr I'm crunchy. Okay. You take the outer edge, okay. and I'm going to go straight for the soft center. Mm. Oh. See what I'm talking about? It that molasses, mm. the salt on the top. So good. We're not done yet, though, Vera. We have not put together the peanut butter and jelly sandwich cookies. Okay. You take peanut butter, I'll take jelly. I will take that Any flavor time. you want of jelly, grape, strawberry, whatever your preference, go for it. But we like grape. I love grape. That's the classic. So you'll pipe some peanut butter filling there. This is a peanut butter mousse made with cream cheese, butter, peanut butter, confectioner's sugar, and salt, and it is so delicious. That will be met in the middle with my cookie that I'm just putting a little bit of jelly on. I got to do something besides mix dry I ingredients. know, look at you. That's we can so do more easy. baking together. <laughs> so you take the jelly side and meet in the middle with your peanut butter side, uh, and there's your peanut butter oh and gosh. jelly sandwich cookie. All right, and then? And then I put the crown jewel on those bourbon pecan thumbprint cookies as well. Put a nice little pecan on top to show off. I mean, this okay, is like we, such. Okay, now we taste a little bit of you this. You want some of the peanut butter, yeah. don't you? Yes. Here's one, just, mm. See that sugar crunch you get? Do you remember smelling those in the lunchroom when you were yes. in? Oh my gosh. Always right. a favorite. Well, we've got a beautiful, mm. don't talk with your mouth full, Vera. <laughs> We've got a beautiful presentation, but we've also got a fantastic giveaway. Brian has been so generous. So the giveaway today is going to include a subscription to Bake From Scratch 
to somebody in all 20 and all 20 markets all 20 markets you are going to love this subscription unbelievable and then we have got a grand prize winner that is going to win the cookie collection cookbook absolutely and you're gonna sign it I will and we're gonna put a little asterisk a little star <laughs> on the three that we made today so you'll remember for sure to make those three and then a local potter here in Augusta Tom McGarrett has made this it's fabulous so cookie jar. I, I mean, take I it. wanted, and I have to tell my <laughs> quick cookie jar story. My Gordy Pottery cookie jar was always in the house. That's now I want you to beautiful. try to lift that lid. Ooh. See, and did you hear that noise? And I could hear it in the end of the house when John and Daniel were trying to get cookies out of it. So, so it told on them. What we want you to do for the giveaway is we want you to go to all our social media outlets We'll give you all the directions. Please tell us where you're watching the show because Brian's going to want to know. I want to know. We love that part. And we will be drawing for a winner the very following week. So please do that. And you know, Brian, I always say on the Very Vera Show, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. I love We've it. We've had some great taste today. I want you to come back and join me again. Anytime. And I want all of you to come back again next week because I'm going to be doing dinner for two, which we could have done today. <laughs> be a lot of fun. So come back with us. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. See you next time. To book Vera as a speaker for your next event, email info at veryvera.com.